Right now, Dr. Hassan Al-Fakahani, to talk about use of micro-short pulse erbium NGI, laser for management of vitiligo and leukotracheal. Uh, thank you, uh, first, for inviting me to this conference. Uh, it took me a, a lot to, uh, to be squeezed in the program, but I'm, I'm happy I'm here uh, right now. So uh, I'm, I'm talking now about using the erbium laser uh, for treating uh, vitiligo and uh, white hair. Uh, I'm a professor in Minya University in Egypt, and I spend uh, so many uh, very uh, happy time in Yale University in the United States. Uh, so my daily issue in my clinic is the acral vitiligo and uh, areas which are resistant to medical and uh, phototherapy. I live in this beautiful uh, area. Uh, this is my city beside the Nile, and these are the people living there. They are working as farmers and in agriculture, and uh, they are po poor people, kind people. I, in the last 25 years, I had um, many great professors, but these people were the greatest, greatest because they usually pushed me to uh, find solutions for them that is not expensive and uh, because they cannot afford um, to do a lot of things. Uh, so you, you, we have always to think differently. Um, we, we don't have to follow uh, every uh, body uh, who um, uh, was, uh, did previous work. We have to think differently. I uh, declare no conflict of interest because uh, now you'll be seeing I'm using a lot of machines, but there is no conflict of interest. In 2015, um, I first presented uh, treating vitiligo, very small patches in the acral areas using uh, microneedling and 5 fluorouracil and then in the American Academy in 2016, uh, we proposed um, the first um, electro, uh, electrical uh, dermoepidermal separation and preparation of the recipient area for um, uh, epidermal grafting. And then uh, now we are talking about the erbium YAG in which all cases uh, and all research before us, they were ablating the, uh, the epidermis and using um, drugs on top. Now we are using fractional non-ablative uh, erbium leg, uh, laser just to drill holes in the, in the epidermis and transmit some drugs to the dermis or to the basal layer to stimulate uh, melanocytes. Uh, these are the parameters I'm working with. This is a machine uh, uh, having erbium laser. Uh, on the right side, you can see, maybe this works. Uh, on, I don't know, this is not working. Okay. Uh, on this area, you can see uh, this is uh, the depths I'm going inside, and this is uh, the depths of the heat. This is the depth of penetration, and this is the depth of heat. Uh, this is uh, one of the um, uh, uh, um, pulse durations that the, this machine have, and this is also a handpiece which with uh, a fractional area. What is Turbo 2? You know, fractional laser, you draw uh, holes in the epidermis. If you move with the, um, uh, with the handpiece, you might close um, the, the, the holes. So this machine, they have like uh, extensive sequence of pulses, up to six pulses on the same spot. So you can increase the depths without blocking uh, the holes beside. Um, nothing new about TCA using in vitiligo. There is a lot of papers uh, saying about uh, TCA using, and there is a lot of uh, uh, mechanism which is um, said to be uh, um, the TCE is causing in uh, vitiligo and how it works. Um, for me, the protocol of treatment was doing a session. Uh, um, vitiligo should be stable only for two months. I, I never saw a vitiligo stable for one year in my practice, so I only wait for two months, give treatment for two months, and then uh, start working, uh, checking the stability with the mother of the child or the uh, patient himself before each session. Uh, session every two weeks, there is no need for topical anesthesia at all. Uh, after the, uh, the laser, I put TCA 20% and calcineurine inhibitors twice daily. These are the results. These were the beginning of lesions where is uh, follicular and marginal uh, repigmentation. This is the acral areas. Uh, um, uh, depending on the marginal repigmentation, this is a hairy area, uh, and this is um, 
segmental vitiligo on the uh, on the forehead. Uh, this is uh, vitiligo, segmental vitiligo on the cheeks, and actually the the the, the skin quality. I think it uh, it was uh, really. Uh, uh, improving as well. These are the eyelids uh, uh, using the same technique. Uh, this is the ear. This was a very difficult site. Um, and um, you, you know the cartilage and the problem with, with the cartilage. It's, I, I have two minutes huh? on, the, on the timer. Okay. And this is the acral areas. Uh, this was the beginning, but acral areas was not uh, very uh, improving. So we had uh, to think different again. And this is why we um, uh, tried the sequential repigmentation using the short pulse erbium reag laser, as in the poster I presented today. Uh, leukotrichia, we didn't plan to um, uh, treat leukotrichia, but we noticed this during our practice when we were uh, trying to uh, treat the vitelligenous area. We noticed that the, the white hair is turning black. These are uh, the remarks that we noticed. Uh, if the hair is short, it turns black uh, um, uh, along its course. If it is long, it turns to, uh, it, we have the proximal part uh, white, then the middle part is copper, and then uh, this copper color uh, extends to be black to proximal, and then uh, to distal, and then comes back to proximal. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have any explanation for this. Uh, we tried it on the gray hair of the old people. It didn't work. And these are some cases which we uh, uh, did uh, turning the uh, leukotrichia to black again. And even in the eyelashes, uh, when we have white eyelashes, we do the margin of the eyelids with the same technique and the eyelashes, they turn uh, black again. So what's our next step? This, uh, I'm working uh, for it on, uh, for the last uh, two years using the progenitor cells from the stem cells with this machine used for uh, hair treatments. And uh, we are now trying to stand, uh, put standards uh, for the treatments uh, and the areas. Uh, so you, you do not need to uh, ablate the epidermis, just to drill it uh, and use it. And um, uh, using the fractional erbium egg laser with CCE is uh, very nice. And thank you very much. I have one second left. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. you have a question? Uh, maybe, yes. maybe we have an explanation. Uh, maybe five, five years ago, we have published with Takhan uh, the explanation for uh, dermabrasion and laser abrasion with repigmentation. And uh, uh, we noticed that uh, when, you d when you did this, you have an enlargement of inter, uh, interkeratinocyte spa space uh, in order that melanocytes can migrate along. But we didn't ablate. In, in my, yes, in yes, my yes. study, yeah, know, we no, don't yeah. ablate. It's we like just fr a fractional CO2 laser and erbium uh, CO2 laser in repigmentation. You, uh, in fact, you stimulate an inflammation uh, here. The, the, in the CO2, you might stimulate the inflammation because uh, it has a very big um, uh, uh, pulse duration, but uh, it, it has big thermal effects. But in erbium, it's not. We don't even use anesthesia while, while working. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we do only a very uh, short uh, uh, pulse duration, very low joules. And we just drill uh, the epidermis. We, we don't you work as we do, we do not use an ablative mode at all. OK, you will have the explanation doing biopsies. I'm sure that there is thermic uh, inflammation. It's not possible. Uh, if you do you it without uh, putting TCA, you will not get results. If you mm. are doing it yes, without course, any drugs, you will not get reason. results. Yes. Uh, the microphone, please. I cannot hear you. It was a nice presentation. Thank you. I have one question. How frequently was it done? Was it one session or no, was it done? No, no, many sessions every two weeks. Uh, we start with like uh, four to six sessions uh, and see if there is uh, improvement or not. 
Uh, if it is not, we uh, transfer to another method of treatment after four sessions. If we didn't notice any repigmentation, whether follicular or marginal, we transfer to an we stop sessions and we transfer to another uh, uh, method of treatment. In all these patients, did you use only fractional or combined with uh, any medications? Every yes. time, 20 percent TCA. 20% uh, TCA. Sir, it did not affect uh, anything immediately, crusting and everything. I'm it sorry? happens. So, how was the post operative management, sir? Like, how after the procedure, did uh, any other dressing, special dressings, nothing? No, just calcium urine inhibitors in between sessions, twice daily in between sessions. Okay. When you did on the ice, did you use corneal sheets, sir? Uh, no, I didn't use because it's very superficial. Uh, it goes very superficial, as you can see. This machine measures the depths of penetration of the laser, yes. so it's like uh, 50 microns. Yes, sir. Do you, like uh, we use the same kind of machine in our institute, so why not FS01 or other true fractional over PS03, which you have used? I, I use the fractional handpiece. Yes, the, sir. The, PS the micro PS short pulse, which uh, has very short pulse duration. Yes, sir. It's ablative only, no, sir? It's non-ablative. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The very short, uh, yes. Yes, if MSP it, micro short pulse uh, is uh, ablative mode for that uh, machine and as well as for RBM YAG. Yes, uh, the RBM YAG is ablative uh, laser, yeah. But uh, in, this, in this kind of micro short pulse, we just uh, put one pass uh, and it's only uh, fractionated. And if you use turbo 2, 3, and 4, you increase the depths without ablating a lot of epidermis. Thank you. Thank you. No more questions? Thank you, Dr. Hassan. Thank you.